everyone, and welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. My name is Suzanne Gambrulis, and I'm the community manager here at Daybreak. Uh, today's Lunch and Learn will be hosted by Kimmy Delandre. And let me tell you a little fact, some facts about Kimmy. She'll tell you a lot about herself, and uh, but let me tell you some of the highlights of Kimmy and, and why she'll be a, a great speaker today, um, talking a little bit about how to prepare your home for sale. So Kimmy has 17 years experience in the real estate world and has 85% uh, of her sales currently are within daybreak. So that's a pretty impressive number. We know how busy she is. So, yeah. uh, But we really want to highlight the fact that recently Kimmy was awarded, um, uh, as mentioned, as one of the top 500 realtors in Utah. That's a pretty significant number given that there are over 10,000 real estate agents or realtors within the state. So, welcome Kimmy. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so um, I see everybody's on time because I think 20 RSVP'd and we're, we're waiting on a few more. So, to stall, I'm, I've got some gift cards. So, we're going to do a little trivia. How long have I been in real estate? Guys, she just said it. <laughs> 17 years, all right, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> okay, she's like, I have my mouth full. Everybody's quickly chewing right now, right? Okay, um, let's see. How much of my business is in daybreak? Close, 85, but I'll give it to you. In all right, and let's see, what else? What did I just, what percentage am I in in Utah as far as realtors go? What top 800, 600, how many? 500. Yay. <laughs> All right, guys. And they made the little peeps. My information's on the back too. If you was wondering, was wondering, is that correct English? Was wondering, if you were wondering how to get in contact with me, I left some cards up there as well. Did everybody get a handout? Okay, perfect. Oh, I'll get you one. Two? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Four. I'll bring the whole lot of them. How about that? Okay. Perfect. You're welcome. They're just looking at the peaks. They want the peaks. Okay. When my city's over, I click this, right? So that's me, figure it out. So um, when you list your house, they, I always say, so I, and just to back up a little bit too, within the 17 years of real estate, I have taught um, real estate classes. I've um, been an educator for new agents. Um, I was the assistant sales manager at Keller Williams. So when I'm teaching these new agents what to do, I always tell them it's a, price war in a beauty contest because everybody, all the buyers want the best deal and they want the prettiest house. So that relates to sellers as well because if you have a house that isn't very pretty and is overpriced, it's not going to sell and then you're going to be bugging me all the time and I'm like, well I told you, <laughs> it's a price war in a beauty contest. So that's kind of just my little joke there. The 10 staging tips, that's the handout I just gave you. We're going to kind of go over that, but not in super great detail. So, um, and then I've got some pictures. I'm going to look at this too. So, the main thing when, when selling your home is you definitely want to make it presentable. And everybody I've learned, I do, <laughs> presentable is completely different. So, <laughs> you may think it's presentable, and he may think, and I could go into two houses that could be the same floor plan, the same everything, and one is a disaster with kids' toys everywhere, and they're like, oh, we straightened them up, and I'm like, what did it look like before? <laughs> so, you know, I always like to say there's variations of, welcome, pick a seat, grab some lunch. Um, what we as realtors believe is presentable and will benefit you the most, and I'm straight up honest, um, which could be good or bad, because you're hiring me to do a job, 
and I'm not going to sugarcoat it and be like, oh, no, don't, don't move that 17 dead heads that you have, which is very common in Utah. I've never had to deal with that in California. The animals, deers and all the, I was like, oh my goodness, well, there's a big collection of those right there. So, um, yeah, like, let's get those. So if, if I am not completely honest with you and your house doesn't sell, you're going to be mad at me. So going over these, you know, the main thing is, number one is declutter, depersonalize, and accessorize. So people always say, do I need to remove all my family pictures? Do I need to take down everything? Yes and no. You don't have to go absolutely crazy with that, but do keep in mind, people are going to look. 99% of the time, I will have a beautiful, formal living room, and people will walk in, the buyers will walk in, and the first thing they'll do is look at the wall. Oh yeah, I think I've seen her at church. I don't, you know, and I'm like, look how, look at the windows, look at the ceilings, and they're like, uh-huh. Who's that? Do you, have you seen that guy, babe? And I'm like, you guys, stop looking at who lives here and look at the house. So that's one of the main factors. Sure. Do you find that sometimes the sellers um, don't want to hear honesty? Oh, yes. That, uh, that they don't have a realistic... Absolutely, and Zillow, I'm telling you guys right now, will be the death of me. So Utah is a non-disclosure state. So, and this happens quite often, people are like, I'm going to sell my house, especially with a brand called, I don't know what they're called, but they're not my homie. So um, <laughs> they will list high because they have no idea, they don't run comps, they don't do anything, and a seller will be like, I want to list my house for $500,000. they are like, we don't care what you list it for. Do whatever you want. Give us your marketing there. So this house starts off at $500,000, and it's three or four months, and they decide, wow, we, we're really overpriced. We can't sell it, and it ends up selling for four oh five. dollars Well, Zillow will take the five hundred dollars because in the state of Utah, we can't disclose what the house sold for. So it'll base it off the list price, not the sales price. So people go in there and they're like, oh look, this is, and I'm like, no, 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 no. You can't go by, you have to go by sold price, not list price. So yes, people sometimes are a little uneducated when it comes to pricing and stuff, um, especially when Zillow is concerned. Oh, 100%. But some companies don't pull comps, discount brokerages. Just say, what do you want to list it for? And they'll, they'll do the two Ps of selling. They'll put a sign in your yard, and they'll pray that it sells. And that's all. <laughs> so you need to have somebody that will make sure that they know what your house is valued at, how an appraiser is going to look at it, because that's a whole other thing. I mean, you can say, yeah, we're going to push it, but an appraiser is going to come, and he's going to be like, absolutely not. So you've got to make sure that all your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted and you know exactly what for. And especially at daybreak, because it is so eclectic here, you've got townhomes, you have condos, you have Paseo homes, you have single-family homes. And as a listing agent, it's unheard of to, to go to the appraiser because we don't pay for it, the buyer does. But I go every time because if they've not done an appraisal here, they'll comp out a single family home to a Paseo home. So this single family home that's listed at 400, they're like, oh, well this Paseo home is 350. So this, and I'm like, no, 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 no. So the first thing I always ask, oh, thanks for coming. Have you done an appraisal in Daybreak? Or do you know, you know, the different products we have? And sometimes they'll be like, product? What are you talking about? And so I'll give them a little hint and that way this, the comps and everything are more in line of what they should be. So, okay. Um, Let's see, we'll go create curb appeal. The outside of your home is the first thing that people will see, and therefore you want it to look nice. It's harder in the winter because everything's dead or it's that black snow, a big from the dirt right in front of your house. You're like, hi, don't mind this, or your dead plants. Um, I cannot tell you how many times I door knock all the time. You guys probably hate me. But I just door knock with information. I'm not selling anything. I just like, hey, your neighbors just listed their home. I'm having an open house. There may be extra cars outside. Um, but I am surprised at how many people, and this was two weeks ago, had Halloween decorations still up. I was like, 
did I miss something? Is there a new Halloween in March? I don't know. So definitely make sure your house looks great. The weather, uh, the big thing that I always like to um, reinforce is when we're, when agents are messing with the lockbox, the buyers are standing here looking at everything, looking at the door, looking at, so make sure everything is, the door's painted or polished and the bugs, and I've got some pictures to show you too, that the bugs are down and the doormat's fresh. I mean, a new doormat at Ross is $6.99 and that will make a heck of a difference if you have one that's all rusted and gross and dirty and torn apart and it, it just makes a better first impression than an old dirty one. All right, um, freshen up, let some air in, especially this time of year where we've got the heater cranked up to 78 degrees. The house tends to get a little musty. So I would say before showing, maybe if you have a showing at three o'clock, open the windows at noon, let some fresh air in, shut the windows down so it doesn't feel so stuffy. I always like to run Scentsy's. I'm a crazy Scentsy girl. Uh, my favorite one is chocolate chip cookie because who doesn't love chocolate chip cookies? So you go in the house and it smells like chocolate chip cookies. You're like, I want to buy this house. It smells like a cookie. I want to stay here. This is my house. So um, freshen up, lighten up, replace all the light bulbs. I can't tell you how many times I've been in houses where there's no light bulbs or the light bulbs burnt out. We moved into a house and we just replaced 48 light bulbs. Wow. 48! I'm like, was there any light bulbs in this house that worked when they sold it? So just make sure to replace some light bulbs. Keep it light and bright. Um, open the drapes when you have a showing. You should always open all the blinds, all the windows. You want as much natural light in as possible because, of course, it makes it seem more uh, attractive and it's just brighter. Everything's brighter and bright bright, right? Um, bring the outside in. I always say go grab some flowers out of your garden or <laughs> maybe some snow and put it in a bucket. Um, but, you know, twigs. You can always do all kinds of things. And Thanksgiving, when we used to have Thanksgiving dinner, we'd put the turkey in and we would walk around the neighborhood and I would just pick berries and some tree leaves and stuff, and that would be part of the centerpiece. So you can get creative. Bringing the outside in always um, freshens and creates oxygen, obviously. Um, so that's a great idea to open it up and lighten it up as well. Um, play that funky music. I'm not going to sing for you guys. So I'm definitely not American Idol. But um, if you have TV service that streams music, I always say put some soft jazz on because if you have a louder air conditioner unit or a um, if your walls knock when the toilet is flushed, which I've heard. It's always nice to have a little background music, maybe to drown out the street if there's some um, cars or a noisy dog next door. That's always nice. Does that dog always bark? I don't know, I don't live here, but turn the music up so, um, so we don't hear the dog. We don't wanna hear him at all. Um, Create groups. So misconception is that a room looks larger if all the furniture is pushed against the wall, which is a huge misconception. This is number eight. Um, if you float the furniture away from the wall, it will actually create more of a illusion of larger space. That's my feng shui business there. Um, be Switzerland, keep it neutral. I can't tell you how many houses I have been in where every room is a different color. And I'm talking bright blue, bright pink, yellow, green. And that's the hardest thing to tell somebody. I had a listing, um, one of the Paseo homes. Another agent had it listed. They did the two-piece, put a sign and prayed it would sell. They had, their son's room was red with black stripes for the University of Utah. Their other kid was blue and orange, which is Broncos? I'm not real big football. Broncos. And the other one was bright, bright, bright pink with purple flowers. Their laundry room was purple, and their master bedroom was lavender. And I said, you've got to get a paintbrush, and you've got to go to town. Go to Lowe's, get some beige, get some gray, paint it. And they're like, well, we don't want to paint it. And I'm like, you're going to get less money, and you're, they're going to ask for paint anyway, so it doesn't matter. So it took them about a week and a half. They painted it. We put it on the market. They had had it listed six months previous. Put it on the market. That weekend, we got two offers. 
So neutral, neutral, neutral. A lot of people, unfortunately, can't see beyond paint and carpet. They can't realize that's not a no-brainer. We can replace carpet, we can replace paint. If you do it, it's easier because it makes it more inviting to people where they don't see a project, they see a home. So if you can invest in that, that's great. If you wanna have a party and bake chocolate chip cookies, <laughs> say, hey guys, come over, I made cookies. Oh, by the way, here's your paintbrush. I need the laundry room painted. That's even better, right? Sneak attack. Um, and then the last one, number 10, is Color Me Beautiful. Purchase some new throw pillows, um, you know, for the couches, for the beds, create an artwork. Like a lot of homes um, struggle with, it's, it's, it's one or the other. It's either way too much stuff or blank walls. And that can be distracted too, because if you take down everything, People spend the time going, do people live here or don't people live here? And they're opening kitchen drawers. I'm like, what do you care? Do you want to live here? So it's almost you've got to have a balancing act of enough pictures and stuff to make it look lived in and warm and inviting where if you strip the house, it looks too sterile and people are wondering what's going on. You know, I've had people ask crazy questions. Is this a divorce? Are these people gay? I'm like, who cares? Do you like the house or not? So if you leave it neutral enough that people can picture their own stuff and their pictures in their house, that's great. But if you strip it too much down, there's it, people just get weird with that. So let's go look at the pictures. This is my favorite. So I'm going to disclose. So usually when I'll go meet with sellers, I'll tell them the comps and do everything, and then I'll give them a honey-do list. Some clients are great. I give them a honey-do list, and they, before I'm even in the car, they're like, I'm done. When can we list it? I'm like, wow, I just unlocked my car. <laughs> other clients, on the other hand, take a few months maybe to get it done. So I try to take before and after pictures. So some of these my clients took, so they're not the best quality. But I'll show you some ideas. So this is an office. I love the way they have the pictures on the left, but what do you see? Clutter and the pictures, that's all. You walk in that room and you're like, wow, there's a lot of pictures. I like the way they're ordered. I don't like the way they're ordered. I like that feminine. So I said, you've got to remove all those. They left everything on the desk. I just had them take out a couple of things here, but all the pictures are gone. They got those at, I think she said, TJ Maxx for 20 bucks on clearance. And it had a rip in the back. So she literally just taped it. And I was like, perfect, sale. So be creative. Get a little ideas under your belt, like what's good, what's bad, too much, do not, you could always send me pictures. Um, how is this room? And I'll be like, that's great, except for those 19 things I told you to move. The two that you did move didn't make that much of an impact. <laughs> so always, always um, go by the list. It's easier, because we're trying to help you get your home sold, because that's why you're listing it, is because you want to sell it, right? You don't want to just have some people trample through your home and bring in the snow and the dirt and all that. Okay. All right, this is a hard one to see, but this was a disaster. He had a snow shovel hanging up in his entry, or his, his mud room. Um, the mirror at the end, or the, the window at the end looked like a mirror because the way it was, they didn't have anything over it. It, it just was a disaster. They had brooms everywhere. I said, get it all, go. Just put up this, and I'm really big with repositioning things so I'll look through the house okay take those pillows take that picture where's your junk room let's get in there and take that put that here so that cost them nothing they literally everything in that room right there they had in their house somewhere else so easy enough should I turn off the lights can you guys see it okay okay who doesn't have an office like this okay my seller was a day trader. He was 76 years old, retired professor, and probably was the second client I've ever had in my life that made me cry. And I told him, Bo, you cannot have your desk like that. It's a disaster. That's the first thing people are gonna see. You've gotta clean it up, you've gotta tidy it up. We gotta get you a real chair. Um, it, he didn't want to do it, and I said, okay, fine. Let's have a showing, and let's see what, what, what people think. And the very first comment we got is, the office is way too small and cluttered. 
I can't fit my stuff in there. And I said, okay, if you clean it up, it's not gonna make the room bigger. Cleaning the stuff off the desk is not gonna magically make that room bigger, but for some reason, it gives the appearance of making it bigger. He had that cute old telephone that you couldn't even see before. That phone, I can't tell you, was the hit. Everybody wanted the phone. Can, you, can we leave the phone? I was like, okay, I am, I'll see. And he ended up leaving the phone to the new buyers because the buyers loved it. But tidy, tidy, tidy. Stick it in drawers. Be a teenager is what I say. Stick it in drawers. Hide it away. People are going to open wind, uh, open cupboards. They're going to open closets. Just as long as things don't come falling out on them, they realize that it's going to be a little packed because they are moving. Best case scenario, pack it up. Stick it in a pod in your garage or, or stick it in a pod or in your garage neatly against the corner. Or better, stick it at your kid's house or your friend's house. <laughs> This one, it, this is no kidding. This is how I came to the open house. Her kids had left the bathroom like that. And so I took a picture and I said, um, and this isn't Sandy, and this little house probably went for way too much money. It was ridiculous. But little things like that, she's like, oh, is that a big deal? And so your idea of tidy and my idea of tidy could be different. So she, she had no clue that her teenagers had done that. Um, and I always tell people that have teenagers, make sure that their rooms are cleaned up. Make sure that you can walk in the room. I have been to houses where I can step in the room and the entire floor was covered with clothes. And I told the teenager, Mackenzie, this is a true story. Mackenzie, if you do not, you guys know the Christiansons that lived on Beauclair? No? I told her, Mackenzie, if I ever hear that your room is not clean, when we have a showing, I have garbage bags in the back of my car. I will come after the showing. I will take all of your clothes and put them in a garbage bag. And she's like, ah, okay, got a showing. <laughs> the agent called me. Um, by the way, there's a teenager's room. We couldn't even get in. We opened the door, and it would not open. I drove over there. I told her, Mom, I'm taking her clothes. She's like, please do. Two garbage bags full of clothes. Begged for them back, and I said, you can have them back when your room's clean. She cleaned her room. We didn't have a problem after that. So sometimes you just have to threaten to teenagers. Um, this is a laundry room. Again, um, a Sandy House, which they tidied on the left. I said, tidy it up. The photographer's coming. That was tidy. I said, the, the ironing board's out. She, oh, yeah. I put it on the side. It's usually in the middle. No, that's not tidy. So just kind of move everything up. She got those little galoshes and that can't see the watering can. She picked those up at Savers, I think, for $5. So just added a little charm, made it seem cleaner and bigger. Love this bathroom. It was so plain, and I loved it, but I was like, it needs something. They went crazy. They cleaned everything. They took everything out. And I was like, okay, well, where's the stuff that was here? We need to put some back. Oh, I got rid of it. I took it to Savers. So I'm like, Okay, this is an example of going a little bit too much because people go in and a, or do people live here? Or do not people, are they not? I don't know why people care, but it's the strangest thing. I have a listing on Burnside right now. The family moved out, the sister-in-law moved into one bedroom till the end of the month and that, uh, how, can I get some feedback? Sure, are there people living there? Why do you care? Well, there's one bedroom, it was weird. There's a bed there, but everything else is gone. I know, it doesn't matter. It's why you care. So it's just weird that people want to know these things. So we just added a couple of plants. We got those plants, um, I want to say at the Cactus Nursery or something. Those were 20 bucks. She had the rose pictures. That mirror was in the hallway. And that little tile thing, she picked up at Home Depot, I think, for $2. So you just be creative in what, what you can do. I saw a client take soup labels from soup cans, and she framed those and put them around her kitchen. It was the cutest thing. I was like, that's the best idea, because she was a single mom and didn't have any money to decorate and was ending up moving out of state. And I was like, that's great. It draws your eye up away from the dirty baseboards, and it's cheap. So any creative ideas you have, sure. Here's a door that, again, you're waiting at this door for the agent to get the key. And you've got dirt. You've got from where they had their wreath hung. It was all completely um, 
messed up from the reef. This thing was a, a stick on, and you can't tell it very well in the picture, but it was bubbled and faded, it was awful. And then this was dated and old, so she got a rug, she got two rugs, added this little table. She had that in her kids' room and just painted it red. She painted the front door and added a plant. I think that she maybe spent 25 bucks on that, but what a difference if you're standing waiting for somebody to open the door. It makes a huge difference. So, a bedroom on the left, that's tidy, which <laughs> I don't understand, tidy. So just moving things up off the floor, um, things off the dresser, but not too much off the dresser, cleaning it up, brightening the room. The pillows, again, you could pick up pillows at TJ Maxx, at Ross for five or six dollars, and it makes a huge difference. It really does. Love that one. Okay, this is one of my favorites because it was a disaster, and it's still a disaster, but it was much. This lady, I was at her house five hours, and she would not let me move anything. We have boxes here. And this, this was halfway in between. She had books all over here. There was, it was a disaster, a disaster. And finally, I mean, a little bit better, but still it's busier. I mean, you can even see in her hallway all the stuff she had. I hadn't even made it there. But much better than, than it was. Um, it just doesn't look as busy. You don't want to walk into a house and see stuff everywhere. You want to see the bones of the house. You want to see the architecture of the house. You want to see what the house is made of. Can I fit my stuff in here? Will my couch go there? You don't want to see stuff everywhere. Um, here's another one. Very plain entryway. They had their shoes in there from when the kids came in. I think they had mail on the table. It was just kind of blah. She went and picked up that lamp. It was broken um, on the back side of it, I think. So she got that for like $15. And that welcome sign, I think she picked up at Ross for $10. And then the little basket from Savers. And look how much cuter it looks. It just, then that's right when you walk in their front door to the right. So that was really, that was much cuter. So I love this. You'll never get a second chance to make a first impression, right? <laughs> I like him. He's laughing. It's so true, though. And so many people don't understand that. And look, who said that? An insightful person. I don't know. I don't know. an insightful person. So, um, so here's as far as home maintenance and prepping your house for sale. Some of the major things that you want to do is clean the windows. I took that picture when I was out door knocking because I was so shocked that. <laughs> that somebody would let their windows and screens go that bad. Power washer will be your best friend. You could take the windows off, power wash them, power wash the house. I'm telling you right now, you will not believe how much dirt is on your house until you start, you're like, oh, my house is blue, it's fine. And then you're like, oh wow, it was baby blue. I didn't know that. This is great. My house looks so good. So check your screens, check your screen door, check your ledges, the inside of the house. The baseboards and the windows, major, major, major. That's like the first thing I look at are the baseboards. If the baseboards are beat to death and disgusting, I'm like, these people didn't take care of the house. And I can always, 90% of the time, tell when renters are in the house. Because when they're vacuuming, oops, they don't care. They'll beat the crap out of those baseboards with that vacuum and nothing. So I always look at the baseboards. And then the next thing I always look at is the fans in the bathroom. What, there's fans in the bathroom? The exhaust fans, I don't have a picture of one, but the exhaust fans in the bathroom, go home and look at your exhaust fan. You guys will be like, oh, I have no idea. <laughs> but they get really dusty and it's gross. You just pull them down, spray them out, and voila, it's like a new, like a new fan. And it'll, it'll exhaust better. Is that the word? It'll exhaust better. So here's another front door. The size of the door was great. That little H, and I hope this isn't anybody's house that's here because these are Dave Wright's houses. Sorry, Mr. House. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. H. Um, 
but that, I mean, you can see where they had something else and it just beat up the door. The door needs staining. You can stain a door. I think there's stain at the, it's called, uh, there's one called liquid gold that's like three bucks. And there's the actual stain that you could probably get for five dollars that, that will add a little gloss to it. And I'm telling you, day and night, day and night. Because what are they doing? They're sitting at your front door waiting for that agent to open that lockbox. And that's not a good first impression. But this one, oh, oh, how disgusting is that? That's somebody's light, you guys. That's right to the right of the door, to the right. So I'm here opening the door and the clients are standing right here waiting for me. Ooh, that's really pretty. So again, a power washer will be your best friend to clean all that gunk up. And then there's, I saw that one. <laughs> okay, I love it, but wait a minute. You, you might not want to have that if you're trying to sell your house. Go down to TJ Maxx and get one that says, welcome, maybe. You don't want to scare people away. <laughs> it's funny, but yeah, probably not good if you're listing your house. And then home is where your heart is. Who said that? Probably a mom, right? So you always want to make a person... When they walk into your home, they want to make it feel like it's their home. They want to feel welcome. They want to see themselves there. They want to envision living there. So that's where that is. And then I've got, here's me. And then I've got other. So I think part of listing your house, part of the buyer's due diligence is um, doing a home inspection. In daybreak, we are notorious for I will tell you every single thing that comes up on a home inspection in daybreak. And if you want, I'll even tell you how to fix them. So, all right, um, the weather stripping around your doors. That's another big one they love in Utah because it gets so cold and so hot. They're like, you are wasting all kinds of money. Your utility bill in this house is gonna be outrageous. I'm like, well, no, all of the homes in daybreak are energy smart, so thank you, but he's a liar. Um, but you can buy a strip of weather stripping at Home Depot, probably I think for $6, and it just peels off and you stick it on and voila. Bye-bye, home inspector. Um, <laughs> let's see, that was the builder one. Um, oh, another good one, leaves in the gutter. They love that one too. In the, uh, actually this time of year, right in March where the leaves have built up. They'll get up there on the roof and this is a major issue. The downspout's not working. Everything's broken. You need new gutters. No, you don't need new gutters. You just need to get the leaves out of the gutters. It's, it's not that hard. So get up there, have one of your kids get up there, you know, put a little pulley on them and hold them. No, don't do that. Don't, don't send your kids. <laughs> get, get some young buck up there to pull the, those leaves out. Um, and then another one with that is a lot of the homes where the downspout comes, it just stops like in your yard. Most home inspectors want the extender that pulls it away from the yard at least five feet because, you know, all of this, you know, rain we have in Seattle, <coughs> Utah, um, <laughs> will really cause dry rot because it'll get under the foundation. But that's one of their little pet peeves is, oh, nope, it needs to come five feet. So they have those little accordion type, you can just stick at the bottom of the downspout and pull it away from the house. Um, caulking in the bathrooms, that's another one. They love to complain about the caulking. So bathtubs, showers, and around the toilet. It's the weirdest thing, I never knew there was caulking around the toilet until it was a major disaster because it was gone and the toilet was shaky and my client is 86 and he can't sit on a shaky toilet and we need that replaced. Like, we're not replacing the toilet. We'll put a wax strip under there and caulk it and it was fine. And that's $2.38 at Home Depot. Not $2.48, you guys. I looked. $2.38. You could get a whole tube of caulking. Even if you have a little house or a ginormous house, you should be able to do the entire house with that. Um, oh, this is my other favorite one. HVAC units, okay, HVAC units, always, always, always. I guarantee, did you guys know, and I, like I said, I've been in real estate 17 years, I had no idea probably till five years ago, 
but maybe that's a girl thing. I'm totally not a feminist. I'm not afraid to say I've never mowed a lawn. I've never barbecued. So when it comes to boy things, I have no idea. But you're supposed to maintain your HVAC unit once a year. They come in and clean it. I had no idea. I was like, oh. So, and when they do that, they stick a green sticker on your HVAC unit. See, he knows. He's a, he's a man. Then they put that little green sticker on there saying, these people have taken care of their home, and this HVAC is good, and it's been serviced. So I would probably say at least 70% of the homes that I list have their HVAC units have never been serviced. So I say, let's do that now before the home inspector comes and calls it out. Um, and that's easy. That's $75. It's a piece of cake. And replace your filters once a month or every other month, depending if you have animals, they say once a month. Every other month if you don't have animals. That's another thing I didn't know. I'm like, you got to replace the filter? Who knew? It's a filter. So replace your filters, get your HVAC uh, serviced, and then the other thing is the hot water heaters. So the hot water heaters, probably they have a lifespan of about 8 to 10 years, and most of us that live in Daybreak, our houses are about 8 to 10 years old, so they'll also call those out as well. Um, I always put a listing um, home warranty on any houses that I list. Right when I list them, I'm like, hey, thanks, okay, and I call the home warranty company. I'd like to pay for a home warranty listing. They're like, okay, it's $100. It is worth it every time because I've had garbage disposals paid for. I've had HVAC units serve it. I mean, it, is, it, it costs a $75 service fee, but if you have a home warranty, which you can, anybody can buy a home warranty. You don't have to just have a new house. It will cover any issues, and I've had water heaters the day before closing go out. And my client said, what are we gonna do? We have to shower, we have to go to work. And I'm like, it's okay, go to the DCC. They have showers there. You can shower there, go to work, I'll call the other agent, let them know, we'll get somebody out there today. The home warranty company came out, replaced it, and we closed on time. So, those are a few of the red flag items that I see quite often, probably more often than not. I don't even look like that anymore. I went to take a new picture because somebody says, you look different, take a new picture. And I probably took, and I'm not even kidding, 37 pictures. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to have that picture when I'm 80 because I'm not doing pictures anymore. I don't care. I'm not cute anymore. And that's just the way it is, all right? So does anybody have any questions? You guys, wait, slow down, not at once. Okay, just. That one more thing just mentioned, is it just before the pictures of the past? Is it terrible to Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And, and the home warranty tries to get, obviously, the new buyer to continue it, I just get it for a, the listing period. So if they want to use that, but 99% of the time, sellers will pay for a home warranty. That's most buyers will ask for it, and that's for one year. You don't, you don't actually hold it, but I see a lot of uh, uh, seller listings from the home warranty. Yes, so, it, I mean, some agents do it, if you okay with the sellers, and then like I said, it's typical, like escrow if you're in Utah, the buyers pay for their own, you pay for your own. Typically, the sellers pay for a home warranty, but I wouldn't advertise it unless the seller okayed it because it's a negotiating tool. Like, you don't have to pay for that. It's nice, but you don't have to. So, yeah, if it does say home warranty, then I'm hoping that the listing agent asked the, the seller that it was okay. But I always like to keep things like refrigerators and washers and dryers and stuff like that. My clients are like, just put it in a sale. I'm like, no, let's leave it out. Then if they bring us a lower offer, we'll be like, we'll throw in the fridge. How about that? If you bring them, they're like, oh, okay. So it's kind of negotiating tactics as well. That was a really long answer for a short question. <laughs> yes? I would caution people who are not in the maintenance or construction business to hire someone who is uh, to yes. do the coffee or the painting or the repairing or whatever. Yeah. Not, yeah. Because if you do not, Calling that we think, you know, we have one that is probably pressing one of the 
them look at. So <laughs> there is, and I, I couldn't do it. So yes, that's a great point for sure. Anyone else? Uh, a home that really isn't, you know, like you know, how much space is appropriate? And where's, where's that line between park space and that? So I, as long as, I always say, as long as the baseboards and fans and everything are clean, I, there's no, not in this market, you don't need to stage it. If it is really a buyer's market, like we had when the market crashed, maybe that would help. But in today's market, when we have an equal amount of buyers and sellers, I just pulled numbers. We had 189 new listings and 174 that went pending sale. So it's almost neck and neck. If we had 109, you know, 189 listings in 44 under contract, then yeah, let's think about making our house stand out more. But since they're almost equal, I don't think it's worth the money, personally. Leave it blank, Leave it blank slate and people can picture where their stuff goes. Just make sure the baseboards are touched up because you walk into a house and that's the first thing you see is carpet and baseboards. And if the carpet looks like crap and the baseboards look like crap, you may want to stick some furniture in there to hide, not hide it, to um, mask it, <laughs> to, to shine it or something. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> that's exactly right, yeah. So, anyone else? Girls, boys, no? Good, well thank you guys so much for having me. I hope it was a little bit lively, wasn't it too boring? <laughs> and if you guys have any questions, I left my cards up there too and I'll, I'll hang out here for a little bit. And if you guys want to bring some of those peeps home, my card's on the back a little bit. Six percent, so three percent buyer's agent, three percent listing agent, and but it's always negotiable. I mean, it just depends on each agent. One percent on the seller side, one percent goes to the brokers usually. One percent goes to marketing and advertising, and then one percent actually goes to the agents. And how do these things that we don't have like the USAA? Mm -hmm. So what they do is they usually charge three and a half percent, which is really the fine print. So they'll give you your half percent back on the seller side. And you're like, wait, I think that's not really. Wait a minute, how does that go? Yeah, so it's, you just kind of got to watch what you're doing. Um, it is the biggest investment that you, most people have. And I always say, would you, you know, go to the doctor and be like, hey, buddy, I need a discount on this knee surgery. What are you going to do? Is your doctor going to be like, sure, I'll do that. Even the garbage, I, I say doctor and I say garbage. If you leave to go on vacation and you don't put your garbage cans out, you're going to call the city and say, hey, uh, I went on vacation. I want to be charged that week. They're going to be like, sorry. I don't care if you were on vacation. So it's kind of a thing that, and I always say you get what you pay for. So just bear in mind, just saying. But everything is negotiable. Okay. Of course. Yeah, for sure. You should, I mean, that, that everybody should be doing that. Yeah. I'm happy you guys did it. I'm giving you a dress. Okay. If he doesn't give me his address, I'm just going to follow him.